Let's not take a L, but tonight I bounce back, motherfucks. It's the hater uh, back again. Hater mania running wild on you, motherfucks. It's saying almost at 900 subscribers. That's quite a milestone for your boy. Um, and by popular demand, I forget who requested this, but someone requested this and said, can you do a video, 25 reasons why Mustafa Ali sucks? Now, before we get to the 25 reasons, I just want to say this video is actually a lot harder than I thought. Not because Mustafa Ali doesn't suck, but because he's done so little that it's really hard to come up with 25 different reasons why he sucks. You understand what I'm saying? He sucks so much that there isn't even enough room to come up with 25 reasons. It's kind of like if you remember in the Attitude Era, there was a character called Just Joe. Does anyone remember Just Joe or is it Just Me? You know what I'm saying? Just Joe. It's, it's like saying like, hey, can you tell me 10 reasons why Just Joe sucks? And the answer is no, I can't because Just Joe was on TV like three times. You know? So there you have it. It's the same shit with Mustafa Ali. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get to our list, motherfucks. Reason number one. He's an annoying SJW, social justice warrior, all right? This guy is so fucking annoying, you know what I mean? Um, it's going to be a bit more on this later on, but basically, he just seems like one of those people that talks to you about microaggressions and how you should, you should respect people's feelings and all that shit. And some of that stuff is good. It's important, for example, to respect people's feelings, um, you know, to an extent, obviously, right? But uh, the people that tell you that kind of shit are always annoying little fucks. Reason number two. The heart and soul storyline between him and Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight title. That was one of the worst ideas in the history of matches, right? Because the storyline bled into the match. These two assholes are having this stupid little boring match, right? It was like some weird like romantic thing where they're talking to each other about the heart and soul. And they're like, show me your heart. Show me your heart, Cedric. And Cedric's like, show me your soul, Ali. Like, what the fuck was that? Who the fuck wrote that shit? You know what I'm saying? That right there should have been an indicator of uh, firing the person that wrote that. Firing Ali and firing Cedric Alexander. That shit was atrocious. Reason number three. Retribution, motherfucks. Retribution. We're going to talk about retribution a lot during this list, but they had to be their own reason. You know? Reason four. The SmackDown hacker gimmick. Now, a lot of people thought this was great. I don't know why, right? It was just a guy revealing information about people, you know? It was like, what was it called? GTV, I think it was back in the day. Or FU, 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 whatever. You know what I'm talking about? That, that, that's, that's the uh, raw segments and stuff. You don't need a hacker for this, right? And furthermore, uh, that, that part of the personality has been completely stripped from him. So who the fuck cares? It was a waste of time. Like everything else on this list uh, that Ali has done. You know what I'm saying? Reason five, his growing hair. This guy never cuts his hair. Now, your boy, the hater, has pretty long hair now. You know, I have to tie it back sometimes with this bitch. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to cut that shit off real soon. So I understand that maybe I don't have the standing to make fun of this guy. But first of all, when he was, he was introduced, he had this stupid-ass haircut, and it's gotten worse and worse and worse and more girly. He does have nice hair, though. I ain't going to lie. You know, it's like nice and straight, but... uh. It doesn't fit his stupid face. Let's, go, let's say that, motherfucks. Reason number seven. He has no charisma. Zero charisma from this guy. Once in a while, he'll cut a promo that's like decent, but he has no actual charisma. You know what I mean? He just plays the character of angry guy, and nobody wants to see angry guy. Reason number eight. He is indistinguishable from Mansoor. You know, when I see Mansoor, every time I see Mansoor, I should say, I always think to myself, why is Ali still employed? Or, why is Mansoor still employed? You do not need both of these guys. But if you had to keep one, I would honestly, and I'm not even saying this to be funny, I would honestly keep Mansoor for two reasons. One, Mansoor can be marketed to the Saudi market, which is apparently big, you know? And even if it's not big, it's lucrative. And two, Mansoor is better in the ring. The few matches I've seen with Mansoor, when he beats Cesaro, you know? Cesaro all of a sudden is in the elimination chamber. But whatever. When he beats Cesaro, I was impressed by Mansoor. I was like, holy shit, this guy's kind of nice. You know, he's got some good moves, motherfucks. Um, reason number nine. All right. He never should have had the Kofi Kingston push that he was, quote unquote, screwed out of. He never deserved this push. He never did anything to get it or, 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 or earn it or anything like that, right? Uh, Brock Lesnar throwing him off the ladder was fucking awesome. Brock Lesnar is one of the best money in the bank winners of all time. Deal with it, cucks. Reason number 
10, motherfucks. Reason number 10. His constant name changes. Okay, first he's Mustafa Ali. Then he is Ali. Then he becomes Mustafa Ali again. And then he's Mustafa Ali, right? I don't know why all of a sudden WWE started pronouncing names differently, you know? Almost came out. He was almost. Now he's Amos. What the fuck was that all about? Like Amos, like Tomas? I don't even know. You know, but uh, Ali is arguably one of the worst name changes of all time because now we have to not only like go back to his original name, which was changed, but we also have to eventually then start pronouncing it differently so he can go fuck himself for that. Uh, reason number 11. He has ruined the careers of Dominic Dajakovic, Dio Madden, Mia Yim, and uh, Shane Thorne. He has ruined their careers with retribution. Reason number 12. The 054, or whatever, 054, whatever the fuck his move is called. The shitty, imploding 450 splash, which Neville did better than him and did for free. It wasn't even like a finisher for Neville. Uh, the move looks like shit. There's absolutely no reason why anyone would do this move backwards, right? Some things make absolutely no sense in wrestling, you know? It's like, dude, if you can do the 450, just do it forwards. Like, it's not like doing it backwards is going to hurt the guy more. You know what I mean? So, there you go. That move is shit. I never liked it, and because you have to do it backwards, the probability of hurting yourself or botching it is much higher. So it takes a fucking eternity to do the move. Reason number 13. His friendship with Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. That was highlighted a bit uh, during their feud with the Hurt Business, basically. Uh, reason number 14. He tried to recruit Ricochet uh, into Retribution, which was also stupid, motherfucks. Reason number 15, retribution under uh, Mustafa Ali is not the same as it was before he was revealed as the leader. You see what I'm saying? They were supposed to be this anarchy group, right, that wanted to tear down WWE because they were denied opportunities, right? Meanwhile, Mustafa Ali was supposed to be the SmackDown hacker. Now, you combine these two ideas and you lose elements of both. Now, they're just a group of retards running around. You know what I mean? Their anarchy thing isn't working out anymore. I don't know why they don't destroy things anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole point, like fans, I remember my friend showed me Dominic Dajakovic's Twitter or whatever. And apparently he's good at Twitter, whatever the fuck that means, right? And one thing that I noticed was fans were like, yo, this gimmick is shit. You know what I mean? Retribution sucks. It makes no sense. And someone pointed out, they're like, if Retribution wanted to destroy WWE, why would they get contracts? And Dajakovic responded. He was like, well, we want to destroy it from within. And I'm like, okay. But since you got the contracts, you haven't destroyed anything from within. Yet you've stopped doing that. Now you just wrestle. You know what I'm saying? Now they're just wrestlers. And furthermore, motherfucks, not only are they just wrestlers, but now, last, uh, last night on Raw, or was it, what, two nights ago on Raw? I don't know anymore, motherfucks. Uh, the fucking Tom Phillips, that cocksucker, he kept saying like, oh, like this tag team match has implications because they were wrestling New Day, you know, and it's like if they win, maybe Retribution can get into the title picture. What? Retribution is supposed to be someone that's like a group that's trying to destroy WWE. They shouldn't be concerned with titles. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. But the reason why they are concerned with titles now is because their mission has been lost. It is no longer about Retribution. It is they're just wrestlers now. Now they're just waiting for a time to find something to do with them and they're using them in the format that everyone gets used when there's nothing to do with them. They lose, they job, occasionally they might pick up a win. They're on their way to being jobbers, all of them, you know. That's a coach I feel bad for. He actually had some promise. And uh, Dio Madden, I think he has some promise too, but I don't care anymore, motherfucks. That's what I got to say about that. Uh, where were we up in this bitch? Uh, yeah, reason 16. He is the worst leader of a stable in the history of stables. Think about this for a second. Think about great stables. Think about shitty stables. He is the worst leader of all time, right? Even when you compare him to, to a, a team like the Social Outcasts or whatever, the Social Rejects, whatever the fuck they were, right? Let's say that you, that, you, know, you considered Heath, uh, Heath Slater to be the leader, right? He was a better leader than Mustafa Ali, you know? 3MB, right? You could say that Heath Slater was the leader of the three-man band. You know what I mean? Once again, better leader than Mustafa Ali. Then when you compare him to good leaders of stables like Undertaker or Stevie Richards in Right to Censor, then you realize how shitty this guy is. 
Well, there you have it. He's not good. Reason number 17. Not only is he the worst leader, but reason 17, as I said, he is the worst member of a stable ever. You know, you could look at something like right to censor, and the best member is obviously Stevie Richards, right? Uh, and maybe Ivory, like she's second, probably. Then like, let's, the worst member, let's say it's Bob Buchanan, right? Bob Buchanan is a better member of his stable than Ali is to his stable. Even though Ali's the leader. What the fuck does that even mean? Like Shane Thorne is better in retribution than Ali is. So there you have it, motherfucks. Reason 18. He is in the worst stable ever. So he has completed the Holy Trinity, the trifecta. He is the worst leader of a stable. He is the worst member of a stable. And he is in the worst stable ever. So I don't even know how you can come back from this ever, you know? Reason 19. Retribution is basically sanity, except not nearly as cool. Sanity was badass. Eric Young was badass. Uh, whatever. Sawyer Fulton was pretty badass. Uh, fucking... Uh, Alexander Wolf is whatever, who gives a shit about him, you know? Uh, Killian Dane is kind of a whatever, too. Nikki Cross is all right. But they're all better than their counterparts. You know, it's the same fucking thing. It's like they got rid of Sawyer Fulton because he got injured or whatever. But the reality was what the reality was. Let's say that they added Killian Dane later. You have two big guys, Killian Dane and fucking, what's it called? Uh, Sawyer Fulton, right? You have, like, the normal guy, fucking uh, Alexander Wolf, a.k.a. Uh, fucking uh, Shane Thorne, uh, Slapjack, I should say, motherfucks. Then you have the, the, the smaller leader, Eric Young, and then you have the girl, Nikki Cross and Mia Yim, right? It's the same exact thing. I mean, at this point, I would have just hired Eric Young back. Eric Young is way better than this guy, and he's better than everyone in that stable combined. So uh, this is the exact same thing as Sanity. I don't know why they, uh, they went through with it, but here we are, motherfucks. Reason number 20, one of my personal favorites, motherfucks. He has never won any meaningful feud. You see what I'm saying? He has never been in a situation where he had a feud, right? And he won it, and it had any meaning or any bearing on the story whatsoever. I might even argue he's never won a feud. I mean, I know he was cruiserweight champion at some point, I believe. But who gives a fuck, you know? Uh, reason number 21. Even though I hate Kofi Kingston, I have to say... Reason 21, his anger towards Kofi Kingston is stupid, right? Kofi Kingston isn't the one that screwed him. You know, what is WWE supposed to do? What is Kofi Kingston supposed to do? Not uh, go and, and be the replacement in a match? You know, Kofi Kingston does that to save the company, theoretically, right? He does it because it's his job. You know, Mustafa Ali is retarded and takes this personally. The only person you can argue screwed him is Brock Lesnar and... I understand that Brock Lesnar is no longer in WWE. But even if he were motherfucks, Mustafa Ali wouldn't go after him because he's too low on the card. It would be laughable for Mustafa Ali to want to exact revenge on Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar would, would bury the entire retribution. So there you go. Reason 22. He tried to publicly shame Jackson Riker when Jackson Riker showed support for Donald Trump. Here's the problem with this. Here's the problem with this. You can hate Donald Trump all you want. You can love Donald Trump all you want. But this doesn't mean that your co-workers should try to publicly shame you online. And the way he did it was the most passive-aggressive horseshit way ever. You know what I mean? He was like, I hope it's not true that you feel this way. And Jackson Ryder, all he said, as far as I remember, was like, you know, like I love the president, of, I'm proud of the president, or some other shit like that. And he basically showed some praise for Trump and then put his catchphrase. Right? And people like, like fucking Kevin Owens, a little fat bastard, he's like... Oh, I don't care about your opinions. Yes, you do, cocksucker. Yes, you do, you fucking pussy. Say it like it is. That's the problem. The people that, quote unquote, stood up to Jackson Riker were three pussies. It was uh, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Mustafa Ali. And they all did it in pussy ass ways. Kevin Owens was like, was like, oh, I don't care how you feel about the president. I just don't like how you put your shitty catchphrase in it. Shut the fuck up, you fucking bitch. That, you know that you're mad that he likes President Trump. You know that's why it upset you. You know that's why it upset you. Because other people do this shit all the time. They use their catchphrase. But because he's a passive-aggressive bitch, right? Kevin Owens is like, oh, I'm not going to actually criticize you for what I, I want to criticize you. I'm going to do it passive-aggressively, right? Sami Zayn says some other passive-aggressive shit I don't remember, right? And Mustafa Ali was like, I hope it's not true. And he was like, I always liked you. 
You know what I mean? Like, like it was like, it was like Mustafa Ali felt betrayed that this guy, like, uh, you know, liked President Trump, right? Which I thought was fucking horseshit. Isn't fucking Mustafa Ali a cop? You know what I'm saying? Wasn't he a cop before this? Didn't we have to hear for a fucking year about how before he was a wrestler, Mustafa Ali was a cop? You know, that's all we fucking heard. Left and right, motherfucks. Mustafa Ali was a cop. You know, where the fuck is his... Does he have any support for the police now? You know, now that the police are being, like, shamed, essentially, by, by quote-unquote, polite society. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is that all about, right? Why doesn't anyone get mad at Ali for being a cop, for being part of the system? You know what I'm saying? Shut the fuck up. It's this kind of pussy-ass behavior that makes pussy-ass men like Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali. And that's the problem. You have these pussy-ass men, they look like pussies, they act like pussies, they talk like pussies, and they don't draw a dime. And people are like, oh, why, why, did, does any, why don't they push Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens? You know, why don't they? Very simple, motherfucks. Look at my APA video. You look at Farouk, you look at Bradshaw, and you're like, damn, these two motherfuckers are men. You look at fucking Ke Kevin Owens, you're like, this guy's a fat loser. Like, this guy's not cool. He's not like, he doesn't have any, any attributes that make him a good wrestler. He has some okay moves, and that's about it. He does the stunner in a shitty way. He doesn't get a pop anymore. Nobody gives a fuck about this guy, and he's a fucking sissy. Sami Zayn, same shit, except he has this weirdly shaped body. Like, I, just, like, I don't even think these guys, like, like, not only are they not believable as fighters, right? But I would not be intimidated by either of these guys. Or Mustafa Ali. I wouldn't be, I mean, like, they'd probably beat my ass. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm Brock Lesnar or anything, motherfucks. But, like, let's be real. I, I certainly wouldn't be intimidated to, to fight any of them. You know, if, if I bumped into them at a bar or something, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be intimidated by any of these guys, right? Just because of the way that they portray themselves and the way they look, you know? Just, just even the way they look, you know? It's like they look like soft dudes. So that's what I got to say about that, you know? Um, I hate all, all three of those guys for the way that they did that to a co-worker. They almost cost that guy's career. They cost Wesley Blake and uh, basically his career and Steve Cutler. That guy's been released. And this is all because people got, uh, got mad because one wrestler said, I like the president. You know, even if, the, what the fuck is, is wrong with these people? You know, he didn't say, I like fucking Saddam Hussein. He said, I like the president of the United States. A lot of fucking people do, motherfucks. You know, and they treated him like a piece of shit, you know. So I really hope that he outlasts all of them. My dream scenario is this. Retribution comes out to the ring. Jackson Ryder comes out and just beats them all up with one hand tied behind his back. And that's all I got to say about that one. Fucks. Reads to 23. Mustafa Ali's anger makes no sense whatsoever. I don't mean his anger towards Kofi Kingston specifically. I mean his general anger towards WWE. Why is he mad? You know, why is Retribution angry at WWE? You know, like, oh, if they ever give us a shot. What do you mean? You got a shot. Dio Madden got a shot. He wasn't good enough. Brothers are f 5 them. And then according to, to, to Kayfabe, right? Dio Madden wanted to go, to go back to the training center to become a wrestler. And here you are. You're a wrestler now. What the fuck do you want? When was Dio Madden denied a shot? You know what I mean? He's never been on TV as a wrestler until now. Dajakovic had great matches with Keith Lee. Look at Keith Lee, motherfucks. Keith Lee's out there killing it. Why didn't Dajakovic do it, right? You know? Kayfabe-wise, this makes absolutely no sense. You know, but Mustafa Ali still, and, and, and furthermore, the leader, Mustafa Ali, he's had a million chances. You know, chances that were taken away from him by people like Brock Lesnar. That's the only actual gripe he has. The only reasonable gripe is, how do they allow Brock Lesnar to do this to me? You know, that's it. But take it up with Brock, motherfucker. You know, that's what I say about that. Brock is also a Trump supporter. I feel like maybe you have some words for him too, you know. This guy's just talking, talking shit to everybody, you know. Uh, reason 24. No one would ever follow... Mustafa Ali as a leader at anything. That's probably the, one of the biggest problems with this guy is that he is not a convincing leader. It's as simple as that. When he was paired up with jobbers like Ricochet and Cedric Alexander, he felt like the third guy on that, on that team, right? He was the grand metalik of that team. You know what I'm saying? He was not the leader and he should not be the leader of wrestlers that are superior to him like Mace and uh, Dajakovic and even Shane Thorne who I see potential in all three of them, to be honest. And reason 25, motherfucks, retribution was derailed entirely as a result of him. If it weren't for this marriage of Ali and retribution, retribution could have continued to be a dominant force on Raw and or SmackDown. That's just the cold hard truth, motherfucks. There's no way around that. You know what I mean? Retribution had the opportunity to do something different. You know? To be this like leaderless faction 
where they're just a bunch of guys that are mad. Give the mic to Dejakovic or something, I don't care. You know? But because Ali made it about himself, because they took a stable, right? Now, again, I'm, most of what I'm saying is fucking joking around, right? Like, I know that it wasn't Ali who was like, now we're going to make the my group. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, someone creative did it, right? But the point is that by connecting the group to Ali, the group has now gone, gone nowhere, right? The irony of this is that on Monday Night Raw, Ali uh, got mad at Retribution for holding him back, though, even though he carried them. The irony is that that exact scene should be played out in reverse in real life. Like, people like Dio Madden should be like, fuck you, fuck you, Ali. Being attached to you on Monday Night Raw is costing me my career. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you, it's your fault, bruh. That's what he should do, you know? So there you have it, motherfucks. Those have been your 25 reasons why Mustafa Ali sucks ass, motherfucks. Sucks ass. All right, see you later, motherfuckers.